Hi, I'm Alan Tatro with Global Sugar Art, and today I'd like to talk to you about veiners and veining flowers and petals, how to use them, the different types that are on the market, and how to size the cutter to the veiner. We'll begin by looking at this cake. The beauty of this cake is, is all the rose petals on the bottom tier. And if you look closely at this, you'll see that all of the petals were veined. So they all have that little natural veining in them. And that's what really makes this, it gives the, the wow factor on this cake when you look at it. It's not just a simple flat petal sitting on the cake. The flower was also done with the veining and you can clearly see that right in the details of the flower. So I want to show you how this is done. I'm going to begin with showing you the different types of veiners that are available on the market. The first kind, and actually one of my favorite, are these JTB uh, veiners from Cell Cakes in England. They're a plastic veiner, and these tend to produce a nice deep veining in leaves and petals, and they're non-stick. The gum paste or your fondant will not stick to them. So that's one kind. Another variety are the first impressions or a variety of silicone uh, veining mats. Now here again sometimes you'll get a single sided mat where you'll just see the different leaf and petal shapes and then a lot of them have what they call a press back. So you would place your fondant on there or your gum paste and then put the back on and press on it. So that's another variety. Put that one back together. Here's another type. This is another silicone veining uh, mat, and this is a two-piece where you would put the piece of paste on one side, put the top on, secure them together, and just press them together like a sandwich. And they come in many different shapes and sizes as well. So this is a longer leaf, and that was actually a petal, like for a rose petal. Then another variety, these happen to be by FMM, these are, these are also a silicone or a rubber based, and this is a single, uh, a single veiner. There, there aren't two sides to it. So in this case, you would put your piece of gum paste on there, and you'd press on the back of it with some sort of a sponge pad. So I'm going to show you now how each of these are used. And we'll begin with the JTB veiners. I'm going to take some green gum paste and roll it out thin. And we're going to cut a couple different sizes. I'll just use a little, I have a little pouch here with some cornstarch in it. Most people think that you have to have a veiner that matches the cutter. And in most cases, that's very far from the truth. Okay, make sure that moves around freely. And I'm going to cut a large leaf. Put that aside. And let's see, we'll cut some smaller ones. Here's some little FMM rose leaf cutters. And then maybe a medium size. Okay, we'll just set that aside. All right, to use this, for the largest leaf, I would always place it toward the top. So I'll put the point toward the top and center that, that center vein that goes down the center of the leaf. Just center that. And then just using a sponge pad, press on the back. You don't have to press too hard. And then you can use a little spatula and just lift that off. And I don't know if you can see the veining in that, but it will do a close-up shot for you to make sure that you can see that. Now, if I have a smaller leaf, the only diff I'm going to use the same veiner. The only difference is I'm just going to keep putting them up toward the top. So I wouldn't want to vein a real small leaf down at the bottom. It just it won't look correct. So I'm going to put that right up at the top. Press on both sides. And just peel that right off. And you notice they didn't stick at all. And then I can do a very tiny leaf. And I can do it the same way, just right up toward the top. So you can, e and that came right off. So you can easily see that I can use any size cutter with this size veiner and it's going to work. 
So don't feel that you have to find a perfect match when you're purchasing veiners for a cutter. Once you've finished with these leaves, what a lot of people like to do is use some sort of a sponge pad and then a ball tool, or I use a medium cell pick, and you can just thin the ends, just half on, half off the paste. Half the ball tool or half the end of it is on the foam pad and half of it is on the, uh, the pedal. And just sort of thin that out. Now, you can do this with a wired leaf or an unwired leaf. It doesn't matter. From here, what I like to do is take a, um, a piece of aluminum foil. These happen to be the kind that you can buy to wrap baked potatoes in. They're kind of handy. They're the right size. I like using them. And just crunch that up. That's all you need to do. And then you can lay the leaves in there at different angles and just push them down a little bit and allow them to dry. And you're going to get a much more natural looking leaf that just sort of flows with the flowers on the cake instead of a stiff straight leaf with straight edges. So that's one way to finish leaves. And you can see, this, these are some that I had done before. The, uh, we had, after, I, after I veined these and I uh, let them dry, I actually colored them with a little bit of dark green petal dust so that it makes the veining sort of pop out on them. Okay, so that is the JTB veiners. The next veiner I want to do is one of the large double veiners. Okay, now I'd like to show you how to use the classic two-piece silicone veiner. And I have a leaf all cut. When I'm using any of the two-piece veiners where you push one side into the other or onto the other, have your paste a little bit thicker. Um, it generally works better because sometimes if you press too hard, you can cut right through like in the center or, or you can smash the edges. So I like to make it just a little bit thicker than I would if I were using one of the JTB veiners where I'm pressing with a foam pad on the top. So I'm going to set this in, line it up, line up the top, and again, I put the paste up toward the top of the veiner. And I'm going to press on the sides. I try to avoid the middle if I can. I just press around the edges. And what you'll get out of this is a perfect, hopefully perfect, double-sided leaf. And there you can see the back of that leaf is perfectly veined as is the front. And that's the nice part of the double-sided veiners. If you're making a spray where you're wiring this flower and it's going to be standing up and people will be walking around like a wedding cake, that leaf will be veined on both sides so it'll look much more natural. So that's the time where you really want to use the, the, uh, the two-piece silicone veiners. I'll put that right on the foil. Okay, here's a two-piece petal veiner. Now this is a veiner very similar to the one that we used uh, for this cake on the, uh, on the side with the petal skirt on it. And I'm going to take a little bit of pink paste, a little cornstarch, Okay, and I'm going to use a petal cutter. Let's see, I think we'll just do one for right now. And again, I made this one a little bit thicker. This time, I want to look at the, the definition of the petal. And on a petal, all the veining is going to start with the bottom and then gradually reduce as it reaches the outer edges of the petal. So on a petal versus a leaf, I'm going to put the petal at the bottom of the veiner, not at the top. So I'm going to sit this one right down at the bottom, right in the center. Put the top on and then just give that a little press. 
and the silicone doesn't stick. And now I can pop that out. And there again, I have a double sided and it's veined on both sides. So I could attach this to the cake. Um, I, I would first put it on a, on a cell pad and frill the edges with a ball tool and then I would attach that to the cake or I would make a flower. So that's how you use the double sided petal veiners. And I think, let's see, this is an FMM veiner. This one has veins that go from the center out all the way around the circle. And these are really good for small blossoms um, like a hydrangea. And I'll show you that. You can also use them with apple blossoms, cherry blossoms, any small blossom. A little five petal cutter will work. Oh, you want to make sure that the paste is not sticking to anything. And I'm going to use a hydrangea cutter. Pop that out. And let's see. Now, this is only going to do the veining on one side. The top piece is just a soft plastic or a silicone. So I'm going to put this right in the center. Put the top on. And you'll see the hole in the center. I prefer not to push down in that center part. I always like pushing around the edge because really that's where you're going to see the veining. The center is going to have some sort of a little stamen or um, in the case of this, I'll have like four little bumps in the center. And I'll peel that off. And there you can see the veining in the center of that flower as well. And again, you can thin the edges and then put them on a foil to dry if you just want to use loose hydrangeas on a, on, a, um, on a cake or you can wire them. So let those dry. So that's the, the double-sided veiner there. And then the last one, let's see. We're going to do a larger petal. Often people use the five petal um, all-in-one rose cutters. Uh, FMM has a line that looked like this. GEM has them, PME has them. You can buy metal cutters that have the five petal. These are considered the all-in-one rose. Again, make sure your paste is not sticking to the board. Okay. And I'm going to cut out a five petal. Press all around the edges. Make sure that it turns freely or goes freely around the board and pop that out. Okay, so now we're going to use the, uh, this is a um, first impression. Now this particular set has both leaves and petals together. I'm going to set that right in the center of this uh, the veining mat and I'm going to do all five at one time. Now, this is not a really deep veining. It, they're rather shallow. And for a rose, you really don't want a deep veining in the petals. It's a very, very, very soft veining. And again, I'm going to push mostly on the petals and not so much in the center. And this might be hard to see on camera, but this is beautifully veined on both sides. and it has it on both sides. And then you can make a rose uh, either around a little um, a bud that you have or like a cell bud and you can create your rose bud and then your rose and each one of your rose petals will have a nice beautiful veining in them. It really makes the difference between sort of a real amateur rose and a more professional looking rose. 
So that takes you through the, uh, the double-sided uh, silicone veiners from first impression. The petal veiners, these are from CK products or you can get them from Sunflower. Uh, this is a cell cakes. These are the JTB veiners. And there are many different varieties and sizes in all these veiners. I've only shown you a few. This is the classic blossom veiner by FMM. And this is great for small um, five, petal, five petal blossoms like an apple blossom or cherry blossom or uh, the hydrangea. And then FMM makes a variety and many companies make varieties. This is like for the center of an orchid. These are for the leaves. This long thin one is great for grass. So if you wanted to make like seaweed, you would cut a piece of seaweed, vein it on both sides or on one, and then maybe wrap it around a cell pin and let it dry and you get that nice seaweed swirl and it will have the nice veining in it. So we have many different types of veiners on the website. We'll just show you a couple items. This is a rose that was made using the veining and the five in one. This is a little fantasy type flower. This was made using the uh, five petal also and, and a veiner. And that's what was used on the cake. Here are some hydrangeas and some buds. And those were all veined using the little FMM two-sided veiner. And then of course, we did several of the leaves. The green leaves, we did the petals, we did the small leaves. So the thing you want to remember when you're doing this is you don't have to match the size of the petal or the size of the leaf to the veiner. That's probably the one question we get asked the most often and it simply is not necessary to match the two. Thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this short tutorial on veining flowers and buds and leaves or excuse me, petals and leaves. All the products are available at globalsugarart.com. Thank you for watching.